Good evening, everybody. This is Sangeeta Saxena, editor, Aviation and Defense Universe, getting you live from the capital of India, New Delhi. And we are here today in our run up to the most important day for all of us here, the Indian Army's Raising Day on 15th of January. And uh, the best part about this is that we, apart from all and everything we talk about, we have a very special person to talk about a very special topic. And the topic is you know, the use of drones, which is the latest technology in the Indian Army. And the person with not a face you will all not know, J Lieutenant General B.S. Pawar, very fondly called General Bali Pawar. And he's one of ADU's real, you know, he's behind us all the time. And we get him the we get him to do the best of interviews because then you know he has a tradition uh, of you know our audiences know that he has a tradition of uh, military in the family, and uh, from a grandfather, a father, and then him, and here he is who's always drawn two hats. You know, he's from the Corps of Artillery, and then when it became AROP, and then the third one also, not only two, third, and then the Army Aviation Corps. He was former DG Army Aviation Corps. And we also would, you know, like to stick to the topic which is very close to us in modern day warfare, the use of unmanned systems. Welcome, Bali, sir, to ADU's chat room. It's a pleasure to have you here, sir. Thank you, Sangeeta. It's always a pleasure to be with ADU and speak on various topics and also write for you. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Right, sir. And uh, today, sir, uh, you know, it has been a year, the last one year has been a year where we've seen so much about, uh, you know, drones being active and at the forefront of uh, battle technology. With a war going on between Russia and Ukraine, um, Russia prefers to call it a special operation. But, uh, you know, we have seen the use, which is extremely interesting. So we'd like you to talk about this in the Indian Army and uh, the use of drones in warfare as well. Thank you, Sangeeta. Before I get on to the Indian Army, you know, the flavor of the world militaries today is drones. And these are not the big drones they're talking of. You know, the, the I would say about three years back or four years back, the big drones were ruling the roost. I mean, you saw what is what the Americans were doing in Afghanistan. Even Indians... We went to Israel, we got all the bigger set of drones, that is medium altitude, high altitude, long endurance. And so was everyone else going that way. But certain events in the last couple of years have opened the eyes of the Indian, uh, I would say the military, the world over. You saw what happened in Syria and Libya. The Turkish drones played Mary Hill. Uh, you know, the Russians were taken aback, especially when they're in uh, Syria. Thereafter, we saw Azerbaijan and um, Armenia. Ar Azerbaijan, which got the uh, drones from Turkey, uh, suddenly had an upper hand. And now, of course, what we are seeing for the last almost 11 months, what is happening in Ukraine. Actually, it's a drone which are playing the major role. Tanks are nowhere to be seen. They came out once and you know what happened to them with the drone attacks. They got bugged on. This is a major lesson for the Indian Army. Uh, and I, I won't dwell more on this. The Today, it is a flavor to talk about drones, but not the big drones, the talk of the kamikaze drones. Surveillance drones will continue to be the big ones because they have more endurance, they can cover more area. But when we come to you know, the suicide drones, or you call them kamikaze drones, which can inflict such major losses and damage, which we are seeing happening in Ukraine. Uh, no better example than Ukraine. That is where now the Indian Army uh, needs to address this issue. Let me first tell you what the Indian Army has. First of all, look at our borders. We have active borders. Both. LC and LAC, LAC with China and LC with Pakistan. We have been seeing drones from Pakistan. These are the mini ones, and they have been sending weapons in it. They have been sending ammunition in it, and they've been landing in Punjab. Some have even landed in uh, JNK. 
uh, with the consignments. We have caught some. Some we have not been able to catch because it's very difficult to trace these and catch these. Similarly, Chinese have been flying drones all along the LSC spectrum, Arunachal Pradesh, and even Ladakh. So many sightings have been made. And therefore, it's a wake up time for the Indian military, and especially the Indian Army, which is there, which is manning the borders. And what happened in June 2020 in Ladakh, Eastern Ladakh, and what has happened recently in, recently in Tawang should give us the warnings that uh, we better get our act together, the Indian Army, and get these drones at the earliest. But having said that, I don't think so. The Indian Army has been, you know, idling their time. Moment this uh, June to this Eastern Ladakh clash took place between Chinese and Indian troops, emergency procedures have been put in place for defense acquisitions. And I am very uh, happy to note that, you know, almost 200 to 300 drones, small drones, which have capability to do surveillance, have an endurance about one hour, one hour, 30 minutes, and uh, have already been acquired. And acquired from whom? Not from state uh, production agencies. They're being acquired from startups, which are really doing well. They, the startups initially went in for civil. You know, the drone sector opened up in the civil. But suddenly when this happened, the emphasis shifted to the military. And we, I, I will name those companies. Uh, we Today we have got the Idea Forge from where a repeat order was also taken by, by the Indian Army. We already got their drones with us. There's also another company. Uh, sky, from where we got the Skylight, which is Bangalore-based, Skylight drones, which are again light drones. So the process is already on. And as you would have also read in the in the print media, the Indian Army is already in a place looking around now for 2,000 plus drones in the same category, in, uh, which will look after logistics, look after surveillance, look after, and also kamikaze role. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's a movement towards that. Uh, I'll just stop here. If you have something to clear yes, on this, then I sir, I, you know, in continuation to what you are saying, uh, we would also like uh, to understand. I'm sure the audience will also want to know that uh, you know, when in the Indian Army uh, at the moment, the drones are with uh, the Aviation Corps. Now, uh, when the strength improves, will it require a separate core sort of a setup to have these drones absolutely exclusive? and uh, kept under you know the separate regiments and separate uh, units for drones so sort of a thing is there some futuristic plan when it comes to uh, you know organizational changes with new technology incorporation sir uh, sangeeta that's a very good question even when i was in artillery you know the drones were with us and as commandant school of party i had a major role to play in training of people for drones who's come to devlali we always talked of that we must have a separate carder, you know, like the for the drones, for the UAVs for the drones. Uh, there are a lot of misunderstanding, or you know, that a pilot who can fly a helicopter or a fixed wing can also be a pilot for drones. It's a different, totally different ball game. And I, being a pilot myself, drone requirements for the observer, for the pilot, and for the one who the, sees the, um, the sensors where all the information is coming, is total different training requirement. And therefore, th that is the first thing we must be absolutely clear. There is already a move in the Indian Army to have a separate sort of a carder, which is, it's already started for the drones, for the UAVs. And I think it's a very good move. The earlier you do it, the better it is. Because what happens is, whether you are with artillery or with aviation, you know, the focus of the head of the arm remains with his, that arm. Either it is artillery, it will remain, focus will always remain. You know, look at the 400 odd helicopters operating all over the country in such difficult terrain. So, drones are also there. You know, that feeling comes in. And I think it's a very good step, which I read in the print media, as well as I got the information 
that they are planning to have a separate cadre for drones where it will look after you know the requirement of equipment as well as the requirement of men who get it, who get neglected when they are part of a bigger core or a larger core and especially now when what is happening around the world and the here in india on our borders i think there is a need for a separate cadre uh, which which should be you know managed by maybe uh, depending upon this expansion with an officer who can report finally to the to the dg aviation there is no doubt uh, there is a need for a separate cadre yes and sir uh, you know in addition to this need i always there is a need for a separate training establishment because when you see there is always a man behind the loop in an unmanned system and you also have the manned unmanned uh, you know uh, training and manned unmanned uh, systems you know where you can there is a mumty sort of a thing so what does we do we require separate establishment sir because uh, we've heard that you know the training levels for the drone uh, pilots are very short and very you know very crisp, crisp very crisp but uh, not there is a other eyes of the world we see drone uh, you know establishments training category a establishments which are training just unmanned systems warfare uh, sangeeta uh, i totally agree with you there is a need for a separate training establishment but why i am saying this drones in the indian army are not only with the army aviation they are now going to you know the drone man pack which he can carry in his bag these all these drones that are coming the skylight and this uh, uh, rider others uh, now uh, rider are now coming sky striker comic cars they will be you know carried around by these infantry boys so if we have to different arms are going to you know controlling the smaller ones with the infantry some with the artillery some will be with the artillery for observation and you know taking on the uh, engaging targets that is sensor shooter sort of a system so and with army aviation the bigger drones so there is because the bigger drones need some sort of a not a runway but a strip to land when you when they come back so there is need that all this training needs to be put at one place so that coordination instructors infrastructure all that can be made and otherwise infantry chair will also be going to the aviation training school that it cats at nasik uh, i don't see that uh, as a as a good arrangement i think in due time they will have to look at this and work on this to have a, a separate training established for drones because drones is the future of war it is going to grow this segment and we'll see in any future war they are going to play a very significant role not only drones but anti drone technology Uh, both these combined so there is no doubt in that sangeeta i just want to just yes, tell sir. you you know yes, what does india have a lot of information as far as the indian army is concerned we have got the searcher 2 yes searcher 1 used to be there earlier searcher 2 and heron yes. uh, drones okay heron has got more endurance uh, more um, at this thing uh, Uh, the sensor carrying or the load carrying capacity the searcher is more of a tactical i would say searcher too and this is more of a strategic surveillance uh, also we have taken on lease the indian army has got air force already has heron tp which is a larger version a more stronger engine and gives you more endurance uh, which four have been lease after this uh problem with china started uh, which are doing surveillance and seeing that things are happening mm. uh, the there are some in the pipeline which indian army will also get like the uh, um, there's a gatak uh, stealth uv which is under the sink and there is rustam 1 and 2 uh, which are being made by the drdo these are by entities this thing but as far as smaller drones are concerned they are all with the um, private uh, startups so, this sir, is where the indian army holds but the, uh, these private startups sir initially started with the krishi drones and you know they started with civilian application fire, fire fighting applications 
and suddenly they've come to defense technology uh, which is the need of the hour for the drones of today if army navy air force are going to take them there has to be a separate technology altogether where drones also need to have stealth so with this sort of a power where you also have to, is the concept of armed drones also there in the forces and especially in the army sir uh, sangeeta this uh, private sector was you know this drone now there is a drone directed in the ministry of civil aviation okay uh, when i was with the roti wing society of india helicopter society of india about 5 years back i was president of the northern region we introduced this you know the drones also to be part of and we started uh, interacting with the startups we did a lot of uh, activity we conducted seminar where the drones could be also you know because drones are helicopters basically your quadcopters they they have these rotors on top and what we are going to order now also will be those so the civil uh, the startups were always looking for military because you know military becomes a bigger market in the civil as of now the indian market is not very big you know aerial spraying uh, uh, some stores to be sent here in the police surveillance maximum is being used for surveillance in gathering meeting political this thing and also in a, you know surveillance of areas where they been hit by earthquake you know disasters natural disasters doing surveys doing uh, mapping so th- this is what they were and that was not taking much of a, how many drones were people going to buy for this you know, for the government for the state governments but suddenly come 2020 june and for them the uh, the, the, the market is opened up and the military whether it is army navy and air force everyone is looking at these small drones now uh, uh, for buying these and uh, the very fact this last news uh, which is there 2000 plus drones uh, the indian army is going to buy which are of different categories you know some are for logistics some are for surveillance some are for this they have given the numbers also and all these requirements have gone out in october last year and there are i think about uh, 12 major private startups including company like idea forge uh, this uh, adani group the others many others they are all uh, you know going to bid for it and they also they have allowed the like bl bdl and hl to bid for this because 2000 plus more will be coming after that so military drones and 50% of these are kamikaze drones like you were asking armed that means they go and uh, their job is to find the target and uh, just attack it see one major thing which i want to bring out here is why this drones is going to be the biggest factor in future wars that business of that war will be fought on the front lines or the, you know the borders is over now these drones are going and targeting energy sources water sources communication infrastructure and to you know bring terror in the minds of the citizens sometimes they are going and uh, falling in uh, destroying civil areas we are seeing this happening in ukraine so when when the civil population got, starts getting terrified it's a very very uh, you know uh, the impact can be very uh, very very you know adverse on the nation which is facing this therefore i think this is a uh, armed drones are along with surveillance drones are the future of any you take these uh, drones which are take a country like iran shahed 136 the russians have taken drone from iran which is under sanctions and it has been able to produce you know in large numbers this kamikaze drones and they are using them now russians are using them against ukraine so if a country like iran has gone you know despite all these sanctions put on them and produced and now they are setting up a, i i read the recently they are setting up a joint construction facility in russia for these drones <laughs> so that that's what is happening that's what is happening that's right but and sangeeta also if you remember 2021 january 15 swarm drone technology yes. remember the indian army dem- displayed 75 drones in a swarm 
yes. concept and each having a different target yes, that absolutely. concept is also there and uh, the hcl is al already working on a alpha s form which is a requirement of all, all three uh, services army navy and air force because swarm technology in the future you know low cost 75 50 25 some will get through some will attack mm -hmm. so the end result will be what you need yes, so this is another thing which i would like to mention yes sir and sir yes. Uh, when when we talk of uh, unmanned systems with all the three services uh, we are speaking on army day but then you know somewhere down the line we have to you know ensure that uh, it's uh, we talk of jointness we are talking of integration so in the that is a, there be a time in the development of uh, you know drone organizations within the three forces where you could have a jointness of operations i think the, the, that is very important uh, we need because it's like this every service having its own special forces every service having its own helicopters so you know especially when it comes to air force and army there needs to be some jointness in this because air force is doing army's uh, job and sometimes army is doing air force job of search and rescue and other such operations so in drones also you know the, the biggest thing is now everyone is buying air force is also buying uh, small smaller version drones kamikaze drones similarly uh navy is also going in for swarm and these some smaller drones though their requirement is for you know you they've got two these um, uh, sea guardians uh, uh, drones from the us which have got massive uh, you know endurance capability and actually indian army is using them in the on the uh, northern borders so the we need to have a joint uh, uh, you know jointness in this so that this is coordinated who needs how much there no doubt in my mind when it come to kamikaze drones when it comes to small surveillance drones when it come to over the hill you know information it is the indian army which requires these drones the air force has got their own they need the bigger ones i mean i don't see why air force should be having these small drones for what purpose even the navy needs you know larger drones to cover larger areas in the oceans but the military which is sitting on high altitudes uh, and on the borders which are active you need drones to see across the hill infantry man must be able to operate them and therefore that is the need of the army. and therefore maybe the lead service should be the army and uh, basically it is the army's requirement when it comes to small drones and the larger drones are not can be uh, you know coordinated by uh, another organization or uh, the air force but i have no doubt that when it comes to small uh, killer drones surveillance drones it has to be the indian army which uh, look at the integration but when you talked of jointness let's say tomorrow we are in a war with china what you need is how will you discover how will you trace and how will you respond to the drones coming from across for that you need a joint integrated air defense Uh, system in india which is a must and also the response shooter to say you know sensor to shooter across all platforms that is the need of the jointness air defense where missiles uavs drones everything which is coming from across aircraft for that you need this must be whereas uh, that is happening but it's still uh, you know some distance away yes sir and uh, so today where we had the press conference by the army chief and he when he spoke he talked about his answering to option and he said that you know we are planning a one theater command and in that case sir when we talk of a one theater command uh, it is a futuristic talk he's saying the plans are there we are very confident that we we'll go through with it so does that mean sir that uh, uh, you know somewhere there drones will start playing a very important role in this one theater command or they take a back seat you know a thing like drones especially when you come to the smaller 
drones which are required for which are we are seeing in Ukraine. You can't be putting under theater commands and under someone who's going to control. These are required there in the forward with the infantry battalion, the RT regiments who need to operate them. The man on the ground needs to operate. They're, I mean, they're coming under the concept at all. I just don't see it. This is a personal, this is a person of an infantry man who's sitting on the, uh, you know, on the LSC or LC. Absolutely. He wants information. The commander, the, the company commander, the battalion commander wants information. He's the one who's going to act. I'm not even going as far as the division commander. These are the guys who need the information sitting. Let's say someone is singing a tank. Say, he's the one. He's the one. How is the chap sitting behind it? Brigade headquarters, could you, you know, coordinate this and fight out? Yes, he can convey that information. But he's the one who will get the information. By operating these drones there, eh? and in high altitude, it's not all that simple. Luckily, all these drones that the Indian Army is now asking for acquisition and what we have acquired are all high altitude capable. Because uh, our future war is going to be on the northern borders, and where the uh, heights are from anything from 15,000, 17,000 feet. That's where our requirement is, and therefore, all that equipment that we buy must be able to operate high altitude. Otherwise, uh, you know, if, if it is not capable of doing it, it has got no meaning. So I don't subscribe to the concept uh, uh, that these UAVs will go into the theater command. Uh, it is beyond my imagination. All right, sir. Absolutely. And sir, uh, you know, going beyond that, we, when we talk of China and we talk of Pakistan, <coughs> so what is the, where do they stand and where do we stand? Do we need to walk that step ahead, which is very steep? Or uh, are we near them? Because they are our major rivals. And whenever we plan anything, where, as far as acquisition goes, we always keep in mind that you know, it's China and Pakistan we are planning for. So in that case, sir, how where do we stand vis-a-vis -vis our neighbors? Uh, let me first tell you, uh, Sangeeta, that in the world today, US, Israel, Turkey, uh, uh, Turkey, I, I mean, I think Turkey are the leading uh, exponents of uh, UAVs. And China. China is, uh, their UAV development is uh, far ahead of us. See, we, they are developing their own, whether technology is borrowed or this thing, whatever they have done. But they are developing long range, they are developing short range, they are developing killer drones. China is way ahead. But when it comes to Pakistan, uh, they have got, but these are Chinese, you know, like Barak, there's another one. They have also, uh, in the same class, they have taken a lot of technology from China in a joint venture they are making, uh, these UAVs. Uh, but what is my concern is, you know, Turkey has got this Bayraktar, which is playing Mary Hill and uh, you know, Ukraine is using them. They have these Turkish uh, drones, which is very good. So tomorrow they can buy these or get these from Turkey. Now these are some drones that we have, and they can also be armed. We saw what uh, in, happened in Azerbaijan and Armenian war where these were used, and uh, they are also being used by Ukraine. They have been used in attacks, uh, you know, uh, in Crimea on the basis, the Russian basis there. So, uh, we, but we are catching up. You see, we have been fully dependent on Israel. We got the heralds, we got the searchers. We got them in 90s. Remember when, uh, uh, somewhere in 96, I remember, uh, when I was, uh, these started coming, the searcher one, two, and then came the herons. But we are moving ahead. When I told you what the DRDO is developing, the Rustum 1, Rustum 2, these are all. Rustum 2 is a high altitude, long endurance. Rustum 1 is medium altitude, long endurance. And the most important development is the Gathak, which is a stealth UAV and which will be also be armed with missiles. Now that development is on. It is a, you know, not much news comes about it, but it is available. Still, you can still find out. This is going on, this project. 
so we are catching up when it comes to china but on the smaller drones i think we'll cross both china and pakistan because look at the startups they're very good i i my full marks to this there are almost 30 startups only dealing with small uavs and drones including killer drones and some of them have come up uh, you know very well uh, i i can read out so many names uh, out of these uh, idea forge is one bhad forge is also there uh, adani uh, is there lnt is there there are there are so many of them all these people have come and now they are all in the race for this 2000 plus uh, drones so we'll 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 certainly i i think we may go ahead in this in this category of drones uh, we'll go far ahead of china because of capability of our private industry absolutely sir and at the end sir i would really like to ask you uh, you are an expert sir with uh, so much of a backdrop <coughs> in the various cores you've been in do you see the indian uh, soldier uh, especially the indian army getting used to the technology and at the end of the day not being dependent on anyone else for his own attack you see that the soldier some day would be coming to that level where you don't have to wait for somebody to fire for you or you it was a capability like you know you got the small ones like zupa made ajit mini drones and all they very small and beautiful things and 1 kg and 2 kg so do we, are we looking forward to an army where everybody will be able to handle their own drone and you know take it ahead as a weapon the ig technology uh, i'll tell you sangeeta having been a gunner also and an aviator you know we used to fly this uh, oster mark 9 with the the panel had just three instruments your speed your you know artificial intelligence give it telling the level and direction di is direction control with a compass that's all you had we used to fly the this thing and our chaps so you know they could there was hardly anything to maintain that aircraft you saw the wings everything is okay engine they would uh, see it is a piston engine come jet engine technology now you see the same men have you know they have got the training they have up- upgraded themselves and if you see the avionics of a modern day helicopter it is mind boggling even now when i go and sit in the alh i get confused so it's like a glass cockpit i mean everything you it's just touch button but those guys are maintaining it. they are maintaining engines which are of latest technology jet engines so i think you know along way, as this equipment keeps coming uh, the the men's training and their capability to handle that equipment will increase i still remember when smirch you know the uh, rocket launchers came from russia they were they were sophisticated there are you know long range sophisticated equipment with uh, simulators but i saw in school of rt i mean it was all being handled by our own men who got trained and learned and they did that and you know when you carry the small uav in your backpack we we are talking about infantry man everyone says he can only he can handle his own rifle i think a, a stage will come that the indian army is making going to make sure that the training adequate training is given and they will be capable of handling i have no doubt because the men come up to the level when a new equipment comes so much of new equipment is coming in and i think our people are uh, are able to handle that equipment whether it's a artillery gun which have come we got two latest guns the sp gun and this they are handling it we got the latest helicopters they are handling it we got this uh, you know drones now which are coming which came after 2020 last year so many of these mini drones have come they are handling it so i think uh, the capability exists and our uh, our training uh, concept and the training uh, organizations should be able to meet up this challenge they'll have to meet it up there is no other way they'll have to meet up this challenge and have people ready to be able to operate this latest technology equipment so 
So that was wonderful. You know, it was so nice speaking with you. And you know, it's a subject after everybody's heart in this country at the moment. It's a technology which everybody's in awe of and feel that it can be used for the best of the nation. I think, sir, it was wonderful speaking with you. And the next time when we talk about it, I'm sure you'll have much more to tell us. I'm sure to 2023, we'll have, we'll see a lot of procurement on this front. And, you know, next time when we speak, we sure must have more to speak about. And it was wonderful to have you on the chat room, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Sangeeta, it is always wonderful. What you need to look at is keep keep a lookout for which I am also able, how these, from where these 2,000 plus drones are going to come, including the killer drones. There are a number of people in fray. And then we'll keep a track of that. Right, we'll sir. Absolutely. Absolutely, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sangeeta. It's been a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much.